Inkjet Printing Masterclass. Lesson 5, Colour Printing Masterclass with further study links. These six online video presentations are created from our own experiences dealing with thousands of photographers' printing requirements and as such are based according to what we have found to be successful. There are plenty of examples of non-typical print installations which work well and plenty of photographers out there who simply buy a printer, paper and ink and are successful in running a photographic business. If you're going to do anything in life, it's always more rewarding to do it to the best of your ability. And if you're running a photographic printing business, adopting current best practice has got to, be, uh, has got to make sense in terms of profitability, customer satisfaction and peace of mind. Let me know if there are issues I have missed or got wrong. We're all learning in this industry and I'm happy to share our accumulated knowledge. The advice I give here should be taken as our opinions only. Don't take everything I say as set in stone and should certainly be looked at in conjunction with your own experiences as to what works and what doesn't. Don't panic if you miss some of my commentary. I will be covering a lot of ground in this brief presentation. You will find the complete text of this lesson below this video. Why not print it out for your further study notes? Many of our customers have asked me to produce this up-to-date guide, so let's get started. Now the first thing that we mustn't forget is you must get your eyes tested for vision, uh, colour blindness and general health. Uh, if required, buy a new pair of quality reading glasses with exactly the correct prescription from a qualified optician. Keep your glasses with you at all times and make sure they correctly fit your ears to present the lenses at exactly the correct focal length. Uh, if you skip this first step, most of what I say in this lesson will be wasted. Now, high-end colour printing is a huge subject, so I've broken down this presentation into what I believe are the 10 most important elements. Uh, professional print workers, printing for profit. Enthusiast print workers, printing for fun. Ground rules for colour inkjet printing. Advice from an opinionated old print worker, well that's me. What do you want from your colour prints? Basic colour printing techniques advanced colour printing techniques, very advanced colour printing techniques, submitting yourself to criticism, and very importantly, the final part, is essential further study. Because this is a video-based course, there's no reason why you can't skip forward to an area of specific interest to you. This is your course, so there's no reason for you to have to go through it one and then two and then three. Just use it as you wish. This presentation is not intended as an in-depth Photoshop Lightroom Tech tutorial. I'm assuming that most of you already have a good average grasp of image editing. I'm going to set out what I consider to be the sound workflows for great production colour printing suitable for professional and keen enthusiasts. For in-depth image editing tuition, I will cover this in the last section of this lesson, Essential Further Study. These websites shown here are the places that I recommend that you should check out. They will give you access to the best possible up-to-date online training dealing with digital capture, lighting, composition, technique, image editing, which includes Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, Elements, and much more. Our industry's connections 
give us a unique ability to provide you with the very highest level of training for photographic professionals. These online training movies even talk you through every aspect of your particular digital camera. All this comes in section 10 where I point you towards the best courses, much of which are entirely free and the rest can be accessed at reasonable cost. So we've got the Marit YouTube channel and that's where you find it. We've got the Marit software training website which we have a huge library of online training which you can uh, review for yourself and a lot of it's free of charge. Um, we have lynda.com now that's the largest training library on the net as far as we're concerned. This is a fabulous resource with over 400 photographic training courses and we're going to go into that in quite some detail uh, in section 10. And last of all the business of photography, how to make money out of photography. This is really important and Mark here gives you a very very important insight into how to actually earn money out of your profession. Uh, 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 we'll go into that in, in quite some detail. Now this is lesson one. Uh, professional print workers uh, printing for profit. My definition of a professional print worker is a person who either runs or works in a professional photographic printing business or needs to produce high quality inkjet prints in a production situation. This extra proviso enables the inclusion of all manner of inkjet printers who may work in education, in, in a commercial publicity department for instance, for a, a, a local authority, not just photographers, uh, studios and labs. Anyone who has to produce great colour prints to a production schedule. I'm talking to you right now. The main thing that separates the keen enthusiast photo inkjet print worker from his professional cousin is time. If you need to produce stunning photo inkjet prints for profit or volume production, you don't have the luxury of expending limitless amounts of Photoshop image editing time, numerous test prints, creating many versions of the same image. There are notable exceptions to this of course. One of my big customers often spends days working on one image in his studio and in his image editing suite. But he is a high-end advertising photographer working on let's say one key image for it might be a perfume campaign. All his client is looking for is that one perfect image. Uh, but this is a very rare exception to the rule. Now my advice is make your equipment do the work. This means that when you're taking the shots, uh, let's use the example of a wedding, you've got to concentrate. Don't allow yourself to uh, have a lapse in concentration, um, feeling that further down the line you've got plenty of opportunity to put it all right in Photoshop or Lightroom uh, in your image editing suite. It's not a good, uh, it's not a good uh, practice to follow. So this list pretty well sets out uh, what we uh, what we advise as your as your preparation for achieving a good uh, output print. So you make sure that your, uh, your digital single lens reflex uh, camera is set up correctly. That means aperture, speed, lenses and settings. Don't rely on long sessions of post shoot editing to put it all right. Get it right in the camera if you possibly can. When taking the shots, concentrate. Compose your images correctly by the book. Now you know what you've got to do, you've got to clear your backgrounds, you have to use your pre-researched group settings at your venue if it's a wedding. If you can, time your shots so that you get the best light, keep an eye on the weather, try to take your most important shots 
when you get the break in the clouds to give you the light that you need, when taking group shots, take plenty of duplicates to give you a better chance of catching all the eyes open at the same time, be extremely disciplined when it comes to arranging your subjects for each shot, be firm but pleasant. Frame your shots so that you're not relying on cropping out large areas of your image, come in close when you can. Use your lenses correctly, don't be lazy at the shoot, work hard to produce a body of work which needs very little image editing. In a word, it's that same word again, concentrate. Uh, number three, save, uh, let, let's, let's imagine that uh, our production job, whether a wedding, portraiture or commercial shoot went well, and we now get, uh, we now to get to work on, uh, on a well-lit, in focus, well-framed images, which need very little cropping. The aspect ratios look good, and we've also have plenty of duplicate shots in case the first attempts went bad, particularly the key images. The first thing we did was to download our job from the memory card to our hard drive. Then we're a little bit safer. Then we make an unedited copy, that's without any editing at all, without any messing around in Photoshop, and we make an unedited copy of the job and we put that onto an external disk or memory. So we've got two lives that we have to, uh, to, uh, to work with in case things go wrong. This is very important and may save your bacon later on. Using your accurate calibrated monitor, which we'll talk about later on in this, in this lesson, uh, using your accurate calibrated monitor, review your job on screen and make a first off reduced size test print to check that your colour, your density, your tone, your neutrals, your blacks and your flesh tones are all looking good. If you're happy with your print appearance in terms of composition, crop, aspect ratio, then bring it up to full production size and then print and move on to the next image. You don't have time to take longer than necessary on each image when you're creating a collection of images for printing. In this lesson, I assume that you're using an inkjet printer that has been recently custom profiled. That means within the last six months. If not, get it done immediately. If you're only producing one image for a multiple print run, fine, uh, spend extra time to perfect the image, but always be aware of your time versus profit equation. More time spent on each image means less profit per print. Get your equipment accurately set up so it does the work. For instance, get really familiar with the way your print buffer works how to stack up, how to delete, how to modify the print, uh, the print order uh, and hold part of the print run. If you don't know how to perform these functions, read your printer manual and learn how to use your print uh, buffer correctly. Make sure that your print buffer is your friend and you're totally familiar with it. Uh, finally in this section, I will mention my time spent teaching high production uh, digital imaging laboratory workers in the early days. I made sure that the equipment produced dead accurate colour, density and tone compared to the original, then instructed each operator to trust that unless their monitor showed bad things, the high volume digital printed equipment would do the work. At most, you would crop adjust the levels and print. Once these operators gain confidence in the consistency of their printing, they would achieve staggeringly high levels of production output to good quality. Now, we've got some very nice home imaging setups here to, to, uh, to admire. Um, this is our second uh, lesson 
which is uh, enthusiast print workers. Uh, this is printing to professional standards for fun. For you lucky enthusiast print workers, you're released from the profit imperative. Your methods can be more in depth, they can be more complicated, they can be more time consuming, but be aware that your enjoyment of your hobby, because that's what it is, may be spoilt if you make it too complicated or too difficult. In my numerous conversations and presentations to camera club members uh, and question and answer sessions at these camera club presentations, it's clear to me that there are a number of different approaches to colour printing that give enthusiasts great pleasure. Apart from, perfectly, uh, apart from perfectly adjusted people like you and me, uh, I will invent for the purposes of this presentation three exaggerated caricatures of enthusiast photographer, some of whose characteristics you might recognise to a greater or, or, uh, or, or lesser extent in, dare I say, ourselves. Now there are the geeks who love every aspect of complication. There are the purists who constantly strive for what they feel they lost when they converted from darkroom to digital. Then there are the stragglers who deep down really don't fully understand even the basics, uh, but are intimidated by the geeks and the knowledgeable purists and despite many attempts still quite can't quite grasp the basics enough to produce a great colour print. Now this is a danger group whose members often fall by the wayside and stop perusing digital photographic printing, uh, uh, stop pursuing digital photographic printing altogether uh, and, and, uh, and fail to renew their camera club memberships. Uh, what a shame. There are, of course, many other varieties of enthusiast photographers, but for the sake of this presentation, allow me to put you uh, in one of these three groups. Totally unfair, I know, but, but let's do it for a bit of fun. Now the geeks. Now slow down. Don't think that you have always got to adopt every single advanced technique uh, to your colour printing workflow. It's not always the best thing to adopt the very latest version of software, for instance, before the bugs have been discovered. Look at your finished prints with new eyes, rather than introducing even more complication to your workflow from the very latest thing you've read in the, uh, in the journals. Try printing from unadjusted images straight from your camera. Get back to basics from time to time. And last of all, your most important duty here is to help the stragglers with your knowledge by keeping things simple. Try to explain the basic functions without trying to impress them with your knowledge. Now the purists. The most common comment I get from the average camera club darkroom purist is that their darkroom prints were always better than the digital prints that they can achieve today. Now let's check this one out. If you can, get your finest old darkroom prints which you have still got the next for. Go to a local digital lab who scans at high-end resolutions and tone. Uh, this usually means either a drum scanner, uh, a flex type scanner or similar. Get them to scan in your best negs to a high-end RGB 16-bit specification. They'll know what that means. And then print it out initially without Photoshop adjustment, just letting your custom profiled printer with great photographic inks and great photographic papers do the work. Compare this print that you've produced now with your old original darkroom prints. Let me know what you see. It should certainly encourage you to look at digital printing in a new light. Most purists compare a badly scanned image 
which is then badly printed against a beautifully crafted uh, darkroom handprint. When you compare a high-end scanned image which has been correctly printed, the differences between a uh, the differences between a darkroom print and its digital cousin become far more subtle. And then don't forget the huge level of fine image adjustment which is available to you in Photoshop. I rest my case. Oh, and last of all, help those stragglers by keeping things simple. Now, the last, the last uh, uh, um, uh, group are the stragglers. If you honestly feel that as an individual enthusiast or camera club member, you, you, feel, you generally feel left behind by the complication of digital imaging, my advice to you would be to step back, reduce the complication of what you're doing until you get back to a pleasurable hobby. We don't want to lose you as a group of, uh, as a group of users. If you've adopted a third party ink which needs colour management uh, and despite all your best efforts, uh, you really can't produce a decent print, either confront your third party ink supplier uh, and demand that they sort out your colour printing or go back to the OEM brand cartridges. Go back to a simple workflow that gives you a basic acceptable standard of colour print that you can enjoy. Either way, at least you will sort out the main issue preventing enjoyment of your hobby. If you buy Marat Professional Photographic Inkjet Paper, for instance, we will create for you, free of charge, a custom printer profile, and we'll make sure it works. So if you're at the end of your tether with regards to colour printing, test us out. So my advice to you is to sort it out or simplify. Now, lesson three, ground rules for colour printing. First rule, for best consistency in critical colour tones, don't use high speed in your colour printer dialog box. When you go to print and you've got the option of clicking high speed, which is, uh, which is bi-directional, um, you can have a situation where although you don't see much of a difference in in quality, in print quality, you may certainly see a difference in consistency. So from this point on, if we can remember to avoid the high speed setting when we're looking for print consistency. Now, after this, we have no rules. They are simply opinions. Now, let's get something out of the way straight away. Almost every one of my customers, whether, cut, whether professional photographers or enthusiasts, uh, they all at one time or another mention to me that although they want to produce great prints, they can't really justify too much expense because their allocated budget is limited for printer, ink and paper. And so they're going to struggle along with an older printer or maybe a lower specification printer. They're going to use the cheapest ink that's possibly available to them and they're also going to use the cheapest paper that they can buy. Now, I have a secret weapon here, which I, I have up my sleeve, to counter this argument. I simply ask what digital single lens reflex camera they have. And within minutes, I'm usually given a rundown of a pretty impressive uh, digital camera and lens inventory, which usually adds up to more than the cost of a small car. I'm not suggesting that you overspend but I'm suggesting that you do allocate perhaps a quarter of your total photographic uh, budget to a decent, up-to-date inkjet printer. Uh, feed it with good inks, feed it with good photographic inkjet papers, and do get it custom profiled. Don't expect an old, obsolete printer to do justice to your photographic efforts. Uh, office or consumer quality inkjet printers won't do the job either.